Welcome to Wiseman Training Videos. Today we're going to cover bathroom cleaning. So here we are in the bathroom. Just to show, I, I have water already up in the bucket about halfway full. Again, you're going to add a little bit of Dawn dish soap. Just like, I can't measure it, just a little bit. That's a surficant, but it also breaks down the dirt molecules. And then you need to disinfect with, we use Lysol because um, it's a household name that people won't damage surfaces because we all know what Lysol is. So in this case, I'm just gonna throw like a pump and a half, two pumps. This one kind of drips, so be careful. So just to go over why we do Dawn and Lysol. So it's called sanitizing, cleaning and disinfection. Okay, cleaning is what the soap does. It breaks down the dirt molecules and the Lysol does the disinfecting. So you need both, one to break down dirt, one to kill the germs. Before you clean the bathroom, create trash. So don't take your trash out until you, you are ready to, um, or I'm sorry, don't take the trash out unless you've already put paper products, wrappers into the trash. A big mistake people usually do is um, they'll actually take the trash out and then create more trash. Case in point, paper towels. So here's how you're gonna do paper towel bricks. The rolls of paper towels will have to be done differently and each machine is different, so we're not gonna talk about that today. This is the most common form of paper towel dispenser. So you're just gonna palm it like this and then rip it. And then I'm gonna throw this in the trash. Still palmed. Actually, you can open this first very slowly because the worst is when it all flies out. Doesn't really matter which way is up or down. I'm sure, you know, some circles it does. That's all there is to that. Then you throw this in the trash. You'd also restock your toilet paper at this point. Check your soap products. So a lot of these soap products, when I go to clean it, it's gonna dump soap right on my hand. We all know it's gonna happen. Just let it fall in your hand. You're gonna be okay. This one, um, I believe there's two buttons on each side. So that's how this one works. It's plumb full. A lot of dispensers, there's a button underneath that you push and it pops down. So each dispenser is different. This is actually um, not common, this one with the buttons on the side, but the button underneath is the most common. So we're gonna go ahead and put the key back. I'm gonna continue on to do paper, toilet paper and the sanitary napkin treasure box. Okay, so toilet paper is no big deal, but there are a couple things I want you to remember. When you put a new roll on, these are tricky. There's a way to pinch it and pop this one off. This is my least favorite toilet paper holder that they ever created, but um, my team knows that my favorite cleaners do this. It is weird, but there's a reason for it. You create a, a triangle because if the bathroom is not used tomorrow when Clint comes back and those triangles are still there, it tells you maybe you don't have to clean the bathroom. And it says elite. It says your bathroom was cleaned. Now I don't ding you on it if you don't wanna make the triangles, but if you have OCD like me and triangles make you happy, by all means, don't stop yourself from being happy. When you put a toilet paper roll on the roll, can you do us a favor and start the roll? Do you know what I'm saying? All these rolls come sealed shut, so if you don't start it yourself as the janitor, um, the poor person sitting on the stool is going to pick at it and they don't care that it's flying everywhere. So always start your roll. Um, your sanitary napkin box, always check that. If you have leftovers, I don't like to see too many leftovers on the ring, but obviously this one was pulled because there wasn't enough to make it through the day tomorrow. You can see I'm going to make this look better, the, the box. Um, you simply put the um, take out the old, put the new paper in, 
but then I want you to widen it, stretch it all out, because if you don't do that, you get to go on a treasure hunt tomorrow when the items fall outside the bag, and that's just no good. Also, when you're doing garbage cans, please punch down the garbage liner so that when people go to throw their paper towel in there, it doesn't just sit on top. So every can, you wanna punch it down and make it look nice. So if you want to swing the camera around, you can see how the t this receptacle looks. Nice and clean. Of course, this was made for a certain kind, but see how this was done? So these inserts that, they have a little hole in the back and it can look really nice. We, you can also, you're gonna wear gloves all the time doing trash. I know it sounds silly, but always wear gloves when you do trash. You just reduce the amount of germs you're exposed to. Sometimes you can reach in, punch stuff down, or you can just grab a few items out, which will save you a lot of time. It also saves a lot of waste of the, the plastic liner. So now we're gonna actually clean the bathroom. So now you got all the paper done. We're gonna start now with cleaning. First with the mirror. All right, so first you're gonna do the mirror with your glass rag. You can actually just have one dedicated glass rag. Most of the dirt, or not the dirt, but most of the spots are gonna happen down here in the lower part of the glass. So don't go spending lots of time up north. So if you wanna spray directly, watch how little product I use. If you use too much product, all of that adds up to more time. You can also do the mirror at the end and then any mist that falls down will just be used to shine the chrome. But now let's go ahead and wash down the sink. So I'm leaving a little bit of water in my rag. I'm gonna wring it out. Hope you're back, sir. Sorry, <laughs> one more. Please hold serious cleaning with us. So I let the water run down on top of the faucet because then it goes around the back in those tight spots and cleans there. So don't forget to make solid contact with every single um, spot of the sink. Outside, here, yep, I felt that right there. And then like the tops of these dispensers, pull that little key again put it back so that you can find it tomorrow. Now we're gonna clean the soap dispenser. It's gonna fall on you, so just deal with it. Of course, when I say it will, then it doesn't happen. But a lot of times these soap dispensers, you get too close, you just let it fall right on your hand. We don't care. And then you can rinse it off, okay? So it doesn't take too long. Just make sure you get all the spray and don't forget the baseboards easy to forget and now we're gonna um, you, I mean you have light switches the door in here and then we're gonna move to the toilet all right so watch how much product we use it's not much mostly because this bathroom is done every single day so I let that sink in there soak in there have my little brush The toilet brush and the toilet bowl cleaner, I like to tuck, if it is stored in the bathroom, I like to tuck it under behind so that people don't see it. This is a clinic, so we actually don't leave the brush and the toilet bowl cleaner in the clinic, but in the employee bath we would. So you wanna do the cleanest to the dirtiest, okay? So I'm doing all the handrails first. Don't forget to dust back here. And then come back to your toilet with another clean side. It's not complicated, but I put a lot of trust in Lysol disinfecting. Now, don't forget to go down the front of the toilet because fluid goes there. You, sh you should too. Do around there. Both sides, if the wall is close enough, get another clean side. 
don't forget to get splatter on the wall. So that's where the smell comes from. If you need to get down and work around the toilet, so when I was down here, I can see there is hard to reach dirt behind there. And you can do the baseboards once in a while. This floor has already been mopped today, but typically I like to wring this out. Like I can wring the rag out, it's messy. <laughs> Don't be sorry. Wring the rag out and it goes all around the screws or the hinges and gets all the dust out from the hinges there. And you're gonna mop anyway. So we don't care if it goes on the floor, right? So this floor's already been mopped, so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe up what I just messed up. Okay, another fun tip. This toilet brush lives on the cart. So I'm gonna give it a bath once in a while. If this is in the restroom, these get dusty. So go ahead and give it a bath so you can see the gross there. I mean, this is why God made gloves, let's be honest. So shove it in the water. Hopefully you're done with bathrooms by the time you do this because it ruins your water. But once every couple months, you gotta do that, whether we like it or not. Notice how I put it on the floor drain when I did that. And then another tip is about once a month, these floor drains need water dumped down them. Uh, so you can actually take your dirty bucket of water and dump it down the floor drain. Never throw dirty water like this into the sink. Dirty water goes in the toilet, floor drain, or a slop sink, but never down a, a sink, especially ones with food. And then you gotta clean up after yourself. Toilet brushes should be tucked nice and tidy. I don't like seeing toilet brushes. Again, this one isn't normally stored here, but if that gives you an idea, that's what it looks like over there out of plain sight from the um, customers. And I think that's how you clean a bathroom. You also need to wash down the trash receptacle from time to time. And of course, you would have done your handles, your handles and your doors. Okay? And then you just air out your rag. You want to, when we bring the rag back to the janitor's closet, you're going to drape the rag in such a way that it will air dry before you throw it in the laundry. So let's go do that now. So when you're done for the evening, you're ready to go home, you've emptied your bucket, you're gonna take your wet rag and see what he's done here? He's draped it over the edge so that it air dries overnight. Then the next day when Clint comes to work or whoever the cleaning person is, drops it just in the dirty bin. Don't put stainless steel rags in there or we're gonna have a serious coming to Jesus about it. It wrecks all of my laundry. The other thing too is these rolling trash bins at the end of your shift, you're gonna yank the bag out, haul that to the dumpster. Can you just do one thing for me? Can you just put a bag in the rolling trash bin before you leave? I think this is the wrong size, but I want a trash bin in here because, or a trash liner in here because during the workday, the staff comes and goes out of this room also. You can see that they're doing other things in here. They will throw their trash in your unlined trash can. So go ahead and end your shift by putting your liner already in. Nice tomorrow when you come or the next time you come to clean, your trash bins are ready to go. Also, I'm gonna show you too how to hang up and it lets your equipment dry out in between use so it doesn't get moldy. Shadow puppets. So you wanna air dry out your mops. This place uses obviously a traditional mop and bucket system. You wanna rinse out your mop bucket. 
A lot of places have a, a hose on them so that it makes it easier. You could throw your mop down there, run water all over it like this too. If it's easy to clean out your mop, by all means, clean out your mop. If it's not easy to clean out your mop, still clean out your mop. Because if you don't, you're gonna go mop with dirty, a dirty mop the next day. Um, but anyway, you want it to air dry, drip dry, like that. Some places have a spin mop, and there too, you have to put that mop back in such a way that it can actually air dry in between. If you don't, it, it's gonna mold. Same with uh, your other equipment. Go ahead, if there's a spot to get it off the floor, please do that. If you want a spot to get it off the floor, just contact um, James, myself, or Jim Wiseman, any one of us in leadership, and we will help you with your uh, janitor room. So keep it tidy. How your janitor closet is, is an insight into how your mind works. How's that for psychoanalogy? So. Keep it nice and tidy. It says a lot to the company that builds trust with the company.